so what we can do is actually um, go even further and make the sound change automatically um, within a song. Okay, so let's uh, get that going. So I'm going to get waiting. I'm just going to take it out. Okay, we're just going to work with crazy. All right, so I'm going to duplicate um, this scene because I'm going to need three different scenes one for each section of the song uh, that I need a sound change. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate it twice. To duplicate, either Command D, if you're using a Mac, um, Control D, I believe, on a PC, or you can right click and hit duplicate. Okay, so now I've got three of the exact same scene. So, and all the scenes currently will just be playing that pad sound, right? Because that's what I've set it up as thus far. So um, I just happen to know because I performed this, you know, a bunch of times that I've set this up that the second section, right? The B section starts at bar 33. So for my four uh, tracks here that actually are holding the audio for the song, I'm going to move this, the start marker, to bar 33. Okay, I have to do that for all four tracks here. All right, so now when I start the first scene, it should be nothing because I'm playing. Okay, but when I start the second scene, it should start at the B section. Okay. All right, so that's the B section. Okay, the last scene, the third uh, scene here, starts at bar uh, 65. So I'm going to change that start marker so that it starts at bar 65. So for all those tracks, I've got to do that. Just dragging this start marker. All right, so now we've got the first track, which should start with no sound. Okay, the second scene, rather, section B. And then this goes back. All right, so now all three are currently playing um, that pad sound. But this middle section, right, I want that marimba sound. So I'm just going to do what we did before. So I'm double clicking on this clip. It already opened up to the right parameter. So I'm in the envelope. I've got my chain selector selected. And I'm just going to drag this up to value 1. Okay, then when I launch this. Okay, I have my sound that I want. So now, scene one, pad. Scene two, and then scene three is the pad. Okay, great. So I've got my sounds lined up, um, but still now what I would have to do is launch the second scene when I need that B section to happen, right? Um, since otherwise the first scene will just play all the way through the song. Okay, but I said I didn't want to do that because the transition is really fast. I didn't want to have to press anything. So what we're going to do is use follow actions to make the first scene automatically move to the second scene after a certain number of bars or after a certain amount of time. So and this can get, you know, this gets a little tedious, but it's really worth it. <laughs> so. I'm going to click on the bass uh, clip here. Now we have our clip, the sample, and the envelopes tabs open down here. So I'm going to open up the last one, which is this little L down in the corner, which uh, stands for launch. OK, let's close the clip, uh, the envelope. So you can see here there's a couple different things, right? Launch mode, quantization. Uh, follow actions is what we're looking for. So we're going to focus down here. So basically, you can set an action to happen after a certain amount of time. So here, 
is the number of bars right on the um, left. And then the segments just get smaller, right? How many beats, how many sub sub uh, divisions and everything. So um, let's say I wanted it to change after like one bar and two beats, which is really weird. Then I would set it like that. But what I want is for because this one starts at bar 33, I want this track after 32 bars to go to the next scene. So I'm going to type in here 32. Then I'm going to click this drop down menu. And you can see, can't quite get all that. There we go. Um, there's a bunch of different options. You could go to the one above. You could go to the first in the list, the last. It could be random. Um, so what we want is to play the one below it, right? So I'm going to hit next. <clears throat> okay. So... Um, so I've got that done. Now I have to do that for each one. Okay, 32. And then we're going to go to the next. 32. Next. 32. Next. All right. Then the same thing I have to do for the next scene. Right. So, right. You could just have to do a little bit of math. So like what's 65 minus 33, right? I believe it's 32 again. So going to do the same. That's just a coincidence, right? It's not always 32. It could be 24. Usually it's some division of eight because that's kind of how we write music for eight bar phrases or 16 bar phrases. So it's not actually surprising that it's 32, but it doesn't have to be. OK, so now I've created my follow actions. Oh, I have to do it with my dummy clip, too. I almost forgot. OK, so it's just going to play this empty clip 32 times before moving down to the next one. Obviously, it's very important to set the dummy clip, too, because that's what changes your sound. So now take a look here when I um, launch the first scene, you're going to see the scene below blinking the arrows. Okay. So you can see it's blinking, which means that it's going to play after a certain amount of time. So I'm just going to let it roll so that you guys can see how after 32 bars, it's just going to go play the scene below and the sound will change without me doing anything. Okay, so you can see after 32 bars, it'll just do the same thing, right? It'll count, it'll play the next scene, which I have set to that certain sound. So that is a really awesome way to not have to worry about anything during your live performance. So the more focused you can be on your stage presence, your um, skill, you know, with your keys or singing or whatever, uh, the better your performance is going to be. So the more time you put in ahead, even though I know it does take time, the more time you put in ahead, the better and cleaner your performance is going to be. Yeah.